Hi, and welcome back to Public Speaking Online. Today, we're going to be talking about public speaking ethics and what it means to be an ethical speaker and listener. I think it's important to start by asking ourselves what the difference is between morals and ethics. I know sometimes I get confused. I know, don't judge. Well, maybe you've heard the phrase moral compass and that your actions are often guided by your moral compass. Well, as noted by Dr. Perez, morals are concerned with the principles of right and wrong and the goodness or badness of human character. There goes my dog again. Awesome. Ethics, on the other hand, are the moral principles that govern a person's behavior or how they conduct the activity. Morals are dictated by society, and they can vary from culture to culture, generation to generation. Ethics are far more personal because it's how we carry out our morals. Here's an example. Let's say that a very close friend or relative of a company employee comes in for an interview because they heard there was a job opening. Now, without even getting asked a single question, you find out that they got the job. That's unethical because the selection process for how the individual was hired must be transparent, fair, and unbiased. So then what does it mean to be an ethical speaker? Well, one of our many texts would suggest that there are two ethical commitments that a speaker should uphold. The first is being honest, which includes avoiding plagiarism, and the second is setting responsible goals. So let's unpack those just a little bit. As a speaker, it's important that you tell the truth. In other words, that you don't purposefully or intentionally attempt to deceive your audience. Your speech is not a magic show after all, and they didn't pay for a ticket. Well, maybe they did. It depends on the context. Anyway, do your best to report honest facts and statistics that come from credible sources. And speaking of sources, it's important that you always verbally cite any outside source that you use. And you can do so by using two or more oral identifiers. Now you might remember going over this a little earlier in the semester, but here's a good reminder. A general rule of thumb is to use two identifiers when verbally citing your outside or academic source. That includes giving the author's last name, the date that the work was produced or published, the title or description of the source itself, for example, the title of a book, a magazine, even television or documentary series. And fourth, the title of a source part. So for example, the title of an actual article or the specific chapter of the book where you retrieved your information or even a television episode from the larger series. Now, as long as you select two to orally cite, you're doing a good job at being honest and upholding your ethical commitment. And here's a couple examples for you to read through. Now, going back to those ethical commitments, the first was honesty and included plagiarism. The second one is setting responsible goals, and here they are laid out for you. I wanna go into a teeny bit of depth with each one, just so we can understand more about what they look like in your speech. So the first is to promote diversity, and this isn't necessarily an overall topic choice, but more in content and thought. So for example, in a persuasive speech, presenting both sides of an argument or even welcoming opposing viewpoints or questions or feedback from your audience. That shows that you did your homework and that you truly do invite diverse perspectives. Number two, raising social awareness. When giving a persuasive speech, a responsible goal is to raise awareness within your audience. And according to Lumen Learning, this is the recognition of important issues that affect our society. Raising social awareness is a task for ethical speakers because educating our peers on important causes empowers them to make positive changes in the world. Number three is using inclusive language, and we've gone over this a bit, but it's a good reminder here too. 
In fact, did you know that the NCA, which stands for the National Communication Association, credo of ethical communication, states the following. We condemn communication that degrades individuals and humanity through distortion, intimidation, coercion, and violence, and through the expression of intolerance and hatred. Well, that ties into number four, which is making mindful choices in both topic and word choice. For example, avoiding hate speech in topics that might intentionally or even unintentionally produce harm in our audience. Then that leaves us with number five, and that is employing respectful free speech. Now, let me take another minute to go over free speech because this is a topic that I get asked about a lot, both by colleagues and by students, especially those in my media class. We live in a country that values the First Amendment, and that's one that enables you to use your voice to express your opinions and values to an audience. Still, that freedom of speech is tied to ethical speak. Uh, ethical speaking commitments in public speaking contexts, and that includes your responsibility as a speaker to respect your audience. Think about it. If an audience is really turned off or offended by your topic or message, can you truly meet your speech goals to inform or persuade them? Here's a couple examples. Let's say that you want to give a speech about why abortion is morally wrong or why the death penalty should be used against murder criminals. Now, you have the right to voice that opinion according to the First Amendment. So your job then is to build your argument, your case, in a way that doesn't purposefully offend your audience. Because the reality is, we don't know who in our room, virtual or otherwise, might have a troubled history or even experiences tied to your issues where they may find offense. So it would be important then not to avoid the topic, but to consider the imagery that you show or the way that you're framing your claims. Freedom of speech is very powerful and one that I am truly, truly grateful for. Ethical speaking simply encourages us to find the balance within that freedom that also values respect for others. That then brings us to our next concept, which is ethical listening. What does it mean to be an ethical listener? So now you're on the other side of the podium, the other side of the stage, and sitting down listening to a public speech. As an audience member, how can you provide ethical feedback to a speaker? What are some circumstances or scenarios where you might need to exercise ethical speaking? Well, there's a variety of ways that we can provide ethical feedback. For example, smiling, nodding, and the like. Giving affirmative messages to our speaker rather than interrupting or blurting out phrases that may cause them to lose their spot or even offend them. So for this week's activity, I'm going to give you just a few ethical scenarios. Feel free to pause the lesson and read through them yourself. But you can certainly use them, again, to think about the role of ethical speaking or listening. And our our readings for the week go into even more detail as well. So, for example, let's say that you attended a political debate on campus or a digital political debate off campus. And the candidate's speech has a lot of ideas that you just simply don't agree with. How could you exercise ethical listening? In what way could you try to adopt their point of view, exercise empathy, give constructive, not necessarily positive, feedback? Or B, maybe you're going to give a speech and you realize that you lost all of your citation information for a really important source that you know you want to use. You can't seem to find the source again. Well, what would you do? to ethically prepare your speech if you really wanted to include that content. And finally, when practicing your speech, uh, let's say on influential sports figures, and you could switch that out for any influential figures, you realize that you refer to your audience, co-ed classmates, quite often as you guys. 
Now, thinking back to the inclusive language that we've talked about, is the use or the repeated use of you guys an ethical language choice? Maybe you say it is, but maybe you say it's not. What are some other changes that you could make to your word choices that would showcase your commitment to ethics? Thank you, and I hope this was helpful.